Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here. And today I'm gonna be showing you how to animate text in Adobe Premiere Pro. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be creating text and then animating it so that it looks like this right here. Let me go ahead and click this up. And you see that we have this text come down and it looks like it was created in After Effects. It has that motion blur, it has that sort of ease in effect added to it. And basically how we get this to work is pretty simple but it requires a little bit of extra work than you might do in after effects so i'm going to be going through that process and you know we can do different animations like this right here how it kind of bubbles in from the center but yeah we can do really anything we want with this sort of style of doing it so let's get started first off i'm just going to go ahead and delete out of this sequence and we're going to create ourselves a new sequence so we're going to grab our footage right here and just drag it right in then we're going to go to the type tool and we are going to click down here and we want to click once, we don't want to click and drag, because if we click and drag, we're gonna make a text box and that's gonna require adjustment over time. This will make it so that the box always adjusts to what the text is inside. So then what we wanna do is we just wanna type something like Isa Haya Shrine. Then once it is written out, we can do really anything we want with it. So if we highlight it and we go, we click right here, we can move over into the effect controls and you see that up here is the controls for the entire graphic and then for each layer the effects are beneath it so what we have down here are just the effects for the text we can you know move the uh, font right here and anything that we want so we'll do what we did last time this one the old English font and you know we can adjust the size we can shrink it down a little bit and then sort of just move it around and get it to where we want now, the next thing we need to do is we actually need to add a second effect on here. We need to add something called transform. Now, I know you might be thinking, we have a bunch of transforms in here. Why don't we use one of these? That's because this is an advanced transform. It allows us to do things like editing graphs of keyframes and stuff like that, which is allows you to have a lot more control over it like you might in After Effects. So if we go ahead and click this transform button, we're just going to drag that onto here as well. And you'll see that a new tab beneath these other tabs comes up. Now, what we need to do is we need to actually link these two together because in the transform tab, if I scale this down, it's scaling down towards the center and that's not what we want. We need to have it scale down to the left side. So if we go into the transform tab, you can see that there's a dot right here in the middle. I know it's really, really hard to see, but if we maybe move forward right there, yeah, right there. So you see that dot in the middle. That is both the anchor point and the position. What we need to do is we need to move this text so that it is right there, so that whenever we manipulate things, it'll all be affected off that dot, and then we'll move the entire transform back down in the center. So let me just kind of do it, and then we can kind of explain it as we go. So what we need to do is we need to go up into the source text right here, where it says Isahaya Shrine, this text. Then we need to go into this transform feature, and we're gonna click it, and we need to first make sure this is highlighted while we do this so we can see the point. Then we're going to drag the position over, get it lined up, and then we're gonna drag it up, and then move it back a little bit. And now you can move it really, if you wanna like start it from the center, you can have it there, but I want it to come from the left side. So we're gonna get it just as close as possible. And now you can see that it goes from the left right here. So now if we go down here and we do the scale, you'll see it actually scales down towards the left side. So basically what we're doing is we're moving the anchor point inside by attaching the two together. A Little complex, but this is just how it works. Now that the two are linked up, we can actually move the position of this and you see that that circle right there stays with it. So now whatever we do with the position using the transform tool, it's going to react how we wanted it to react. So we're gonna move it back down to where it started. And now if we do a scale, you'll notice that it scales again onto the left side, just like we wanted it to do. So then we're going to uncheck this uniform scale. We're then going to go into the scale width right here, and we're going to start it off at zero. So let's move back to the beginning of here. We're gonna go in, we're going to click the animation keyframe button there. We're gonna start it off at, whoops, not negative, zero right there. And then we're going to move forward maybe 15 or so frames, and then we're going to bring it back up to 100. Now, this is pretty boring in itself. It just comes out, and we could have done this in the regular transform tool. So what we need to do is we need to drop this down right here. And you'll see that we get these awesome graphs right here. And this is where the real power comes in. So now if I go up to here and I move this back to this keyframe, I can right click on the keyframe and then go into easy in. And you'll see that it creates this curve like it did, like it does in After Effects if you apply something like this. What we can actually do is we can actually stretch this out and you can see that we have a little sort of bezel controller right here. If I move this up, it's actually going to go greater than what it ends at. And now this looks goofy right here. You'll see that it comes out and it's really slow and it stretches out and comes back. 
but the reason we stretched it out is just so we could see it. So now we're gonna bring it back to about 15 frames, right? So, so let's move to 15 again, 16, 15, and then we're just gonna move it so that it locks onto there. And so now what we have done is we've created this little bulge. So when it comes out, it gets a little bit too big and then it comes back into play. And that makes it look just a little bit more interesting, like it, it's popping into place. Now, we don't have that motion blur yet either. So what we can do is we can go down into this called the shutter angle, and we're going to uncheck use composition shutter angle, and we're just gonna drag this up. The higher it is, the more shutter blur, or the more blur you will have. So we can click on this. And you'll see that a little blur is happening, but maybe we want a little bit more. So we're gonna move that the angle up a little bit more. And now we have this awesome effect happening. And we can click on this and maybe make it a little more extreme here. And just like that, we are animating this like we would be doing in After Effects. We can, of course, do anything really we want to do in here. We can, you know, animate different things like the scale height as well. Um, if we wanted to try to do something like that, so we can go here, we can make it zero, and then maybe go here and make it to 100. Delete this keyframe because I didn't realize I had created one. And then. Oops, I don't know why that one didn't set, zero. And then easy, easy in on this, easy out over here. And we got this sort of, so we can have it like bulge downward. I don't know what that'll do. That's a very interesting effect. But what I'm just trying to show here is that you can mess around with these. You can mess around with the graphs and the, the scales and the keyframes and have a really good time sort of animating your text like this. And you can throw this on a bunch of different things and really animate anything in Premiere Pro using the Distort Transform tool. That is it for this tutorial, everyone. Thanks, everyone, for joining. If you got any questions or comments or suggestions for future tutorials, go ahead and throw those in the comment section below. If you want to see more videos similar to this one, I make Adobe-related videos every other day, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And until next time, guys, see ya.